good evening, everyone. As always, I am delighted and excited to be with you tonight. I belong to a group that does some speaking, does some writing, does some creating, does some teaching, and we always learn from each other. You ever notice that if you're in a group of people, that even if you have many things in common, that you often grow from the experience from being in the group. I find that when I am drawn to individuals, when I'm using that intuition in words, right? <laughs> that the folks that come up are amazing. We have this little ditty that we do, which is we share thoughts and then we all comment on those thoughts, which works out very nice because we always incorporate it into social media as well. It's fascinating how when you have, again, a group working together, that magic happens. We each put a thought out there. We each comment, as I mentioned. And then all of a sudden, all sorts of other people are commenting. I find it fascinating that I've been doing the social media thing since it began. Now, I'll be honest, I am not one of those ones who says, oh, my God, I got to be on there every second. I got to do it. I got to do it. It's more like, oh, better get on there and <laughs> say, hello, let people know I haven't forgotten them. But doing it this way with a group working together is phenomenal. I found that my viewership went up over 100%. I think it was like 123%, which I thought that was really interesting. When we were interacting with each other, it was primarily for us to grow as individuals within the group. It hadn't dawned on me the impact it would have with other people. So this is a cool idea. If you want to start something new for the new year, perhaps you want to focus on intuitive knowing or you want to focus on things that help you manage stress. I know there's a myriad of groups out there on every social media platform. However, what if you began your own group with just a select group of people? You could always open it up later, but start out with just maybe five, six, seven people with the same intention. Focus on that intention. And let's say what you're looking at is intuition. And perhaps you start with a question each day or a comment on your own intuition and each of them does the same. I guarantee if you do that for a while, let's say a month, all of a sudden you're finding that not only is there likeness between all of you, you also are tapping into more of a broad spectrum view. It's really kind of lovely. Think in terms of if you study something and you're not really aware of what it is, but you study it with someone else, it seems to get easier. The idea of being in a group makes life in general easier. Unless, of course, it's a group you don't like, then, you know, let's dismiss the whole idea. <laughs> However, I think you understand where I'm coming from. Janice, how are you? I'm good. It's been this long age. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did that wrong. That's so okay. sorry. I'm one of those people who wants the name said properly. So forgive me, Janice. I like that. It's unusual. No, no worries. Do you have a specific thank you. question in mind? I'm sorry. Say that again. I said thank you. You're very welcome. Did you have a specific question in mind this evening? Um, I just wanted to know like, if I have fear guides, because I'm not sure if I do or not. Oh, let's see, this is the, the magic of life itself. We all come into this world with spirit guides, with angels, with loved ones looking after us. It's not so much if we have them or not. It's more a matter of are we interacting with them? Are we aware of their presence? And one of the easiest ways that I can help you reach out at least to one would be to take some time, sit quietly, do some slow breathing so you can really feel your body kind of melt into the moment. And focus on mm -hmm. being in either a park or a wooded area, but somewhere that was kind of natural. And see yourself going down a trail or a path with the thought of at the end of the path or at the end of the trail, you're going to connect with your spirit guide or maybe more than one. And kind of walk mm -hmm. in your mind down that trail, thinking in terms of when you get to that end point, there will be some sort of seat 
And that could show up like a bench. It could show up as a tree stump. It could show up as a pillow. Be open to whatever shows up. And then allow yourself to sit down knowing that you've invited that spirit guide in to meet you. Don't be surprised, though, if you don't see someone who you think is supposed to be in human form. You may find that a bird all of a sudden comes and sits next to you and just sits next to you and looks at you. And you're thinking, OK, this is not what I had in mind. Just allow, because oftentimes our loved ones, and I say loved ones, not necessarily people that passed over, but those that are loving us and supporting us, show up in ways that are unexpected. Another way that you okay. could connect would be before you go to sleep at night, say to yourself, I'm open to connecting with my guides. I am open to hearing what my guides have to say, or even I am opening. I'm opening up to the wisdom of my guides. So this way, for instance, if you awake in the morning and you have a thought that is totally different than the way you think, you know positively that it is from one of your guides or again, more than one. Because we come into this world with a group of guides. It's, believe it or not, not just one. We have a soul group that we travel with. People that talk about reincarnation talk often about how we travel in groups. So, for instance, your mom in this lifetime may have been an uncle in a previous lifetime, which is kind of a weird concept. However, if we think in terms of everything is energy and energy can change form, though it never dies, mm -hmm. then it makes sense that if we are reincarnated, we are able to connect at a different level. What's really cool about this is if you choose to do a regression or a meditation that takes you into a deeper state, or if you will, a higher state of consciousness, you can connect with guides there as well. The gist, there are an abundance of ways that you can connect with them. It's interesting because as I'm speaking, I'm just feeling as if there's one in particular that has a male energy and has the letter J attached to their name. Not getting a whole name. It almost sounds almost sounds to me as if it's like a gin or a, a gym. Like it's either J I N or J I M, but it's not just that. It, that would be the beginning of their name, but it feels like that would be the primary the one who stands in front as far as your guides who is closest to you on a regular basis. But it's not Jim in, let's say, an American name. It, this would be something odd like Jim Boney. <laughs> no, it sounds weird. I'm trying to grasp this and I'm only getting a piece of it. So again, it's either J I N or J I M. It's not J E, but J I. And okay, because I'm getting this, I'm going to simply say that this evening when you go to sleep, Definitely use one of the sentences we were just talking about and make it real clear in your mind that you are open to receiving information. Now, whether you're saying I'm open to hearing or I'm open to receiving or I'm open to remembering, whatever is most comfortable for you, but definitely get to a point where before you go to sleep, you know, you kind of get to that in between where you feel like you're starting to nod off and make the statement to yourself that you are open to connecting with your guide. Okay. Okay. So this is something again. That. It's fairly easy, believe it or not. It just sometimes takes practice. Sometimes you'll connect like this. Other times you'll find that, oh, you did it for five days and you still haven't had any results. And all of a sudden on the sixth or seventh day, you're like, wow, all of this information came in. I I really know this this individual, this entity. So can I There's ask another question? Because I have a hard time meditating. Do you, would that make it harder for me to do that okay let's clarify let's clarify a little bit as far as meditation i have a, a question that will help you understand meditation a little better than what i get you're thinking of it as i feel like you're thinking okay. of it you totally eliminate all sounds all distractions and you go into this beautiful deep state of peace and relaxation right not yes, all yeah all right 
what is it that you do that you find that you're just relaxed? Perhaps it's you're walking down the street and you realize you went three blocks further down than you expected and didn't even realize it. Or you're something and an hour went by and you thought it was only a couple of minutes. What is it? Think for a moment what it is that you do that puts you into that space of like not realizing time. Mm. Listen to music, maybe? Okay, perfect. Then give some thought to which music puts you into that place where you can listen to it and you're just kind of there and you're enjoying, whether it's because it's real quiet or because you're dancing, it doesn't matter. But take a look at how that makes you feel. Usually in that state, it's simply an altered state of consciousness. People assume that when you meditate, you have to be like the yogi on the hill, you know, perfect clarity, <laughs> perfect peace. I got to tell you, it's really hard even for someone who's a seasoned meditator like I am. I've been meditating since I was five. <laughs> so it's not exactly like that. It's more a matter of that. Mind, quite your mind, shut your mind off. Right. But it's not because you're forcing it to go off. It's because you are distracting yourself with something that you are enjoying. So again, you know, you're thinking okay. maybe. Music. So give thought to that. But maybe when we get off the call, you take a moment and you just think about what is it that I do that I completely forget about what time it is? Or what is it that I do that I kind of forget about everybody else? <laughs> or what is <laughs> What is it that I do that I get totally engrossed in the moment? And even if somebody walks into the room, I don't hear them. As a mom, that's kind of hard to pinpoint. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm just suggesting that you take a little bit of time to give some thought about this. And you'll find that, oh, wait, yeah, I go there and that feels good. That's the place that you want to get into. That's the place that when you are there, you're actually able to connect at a higher level to your own consciousness, to what's known as super conscious. And it okay. doesn't have to be difficult. It's simply allowing your mind again to shift into a, a different state of consciousness. All right, my friend. Okay, that makes more sense than I've ever heard before. Thank you so much. So glad. <laughs> Try it. I think truly you'll go like, well, that was easy. <laughs> Versus I've been trying so hard and it's not working. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Have you ever heard the expression of, oh, you know, there's an elephant in the middle of the room? Kind of like the idea that there's something sitting there that everybody's trying not to pay attention to. When you try not to pay attention to something, what do you do? You pay attention to it. So what exactly. I'm saying is you let all that go and instead just get into that altered state and you will find that's when you can ask questions. That's when you can connect easiest. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. I will try that. Okay, Janice. Have a great evening and a wonderful and beautiful holiday season. Thank you. You too. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. All right. I know we have Jasmine on the line. Hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How Hello. are you? Good evening. Hello. I'm doing well. How are you? Okay. There is a like a reverb here. Do you have more than one device on? No, I just have the one device that I'm using. Interesting. Do you have it on speaker? No, I do not. Okay. We just have an unusual connection. I, I hear you twice. So I guess that's an okay thing. <laughs> Is there a particular area of focus that you had for this evening? Um, Just to see about loved ones or guides or angels that are around me. I just want to know, do I have any of that and who are they? Like, you know, I have like the people that have passed away, I would like to know if they're around me and who is it. Okay. 
It's interesting. This evening, this is the topic, and it was kind of the topic today in respect to tapping into the divine from some other folks I was talking with. So this is kind of cool. As I mentioned to the other gal, and this is very apropos for you as well, we always have loved ones, guides, angels around us. We're just not always aware of them. In respect to the difference, though, between a guide, an angel, and a loved one who's passed, there are differences. An angel is not necessarily, let's say, a great-grandma who passed who all of a sudden became an angel. Angel would be separate from a loved one who passed. A guide, though, may become or I should say a person may become a guide when they pass on, though guides do not necessarily have to incarnate as family members. So just so that you know that there's kind of a distinction there, that they're all good. They all have to do with helping us, loving us, protecting us, and literally guiding us. So when it comes to loved ones that have passed, it's interesting because I get two males that are around you. I feel that one is younger. I feel like they passed before their time. And then I get the other as normal age to go um, several generations back though. To me, this would be three generations back. So for instance, it wouldn't be, let's say a dad or even a grandpa. It could be a great grandpa or even a little further back, but it feels like it's a minimum of three generations back, male that is around you as far as family. And again, a, a younger person, I feel that past that is around you. An interesting thing here with the person that I get that's younger, or I should say past too young, that's a better way to phrase this. They've traveled many lifetimes with you. There is definitely a, a heart connection there. This is somebody who has always been with you, I would say, I'm going to use the word always carefully here because always not as in every single lifetime, but in many, many lifetimes. This to me would be what's considered a, some people refer to them as twin flames, as in your energy was split. So there's that light that comes from you that is actually in two. Best way that I can express this, not twin flame as in, oh my gosh, this is the love of my life, but more connected in the sense of your souls were together. And this individual still comes into each lifetime with you. So again, to answer this, and I'm sorry if I'm talking in circles here, I'm trying to grasp information. You have someone who passed older. And again, it, it would be several, gen at least a few generations back. And then you have someone who passed too young. And to me, too young would be anything under, we'll say, 40. I don't mean to be funny. People are living to be 100 years old. So if somebody passed at 40, that would be relatively young or even younger. For whatever reason, I feel like this individual passed perhaps either late teens or early 20s. I don't know if you know who that is off the top of your head. No, I'm unsure of any of both of those, actually, I don't know. Okay. Just kind of keep it in the back of your head. I get the, get the feeling that something will click here because I, I keep getting a very strong presence with one who passed who was younger. And I will say it may even be an individual who's connected to another family member. So it could be somebody who is, let's say, connected through your mom or through someone else in the family that watches over you. And again, I get that soul connection there that you've traveled together more than once. Um, you definitely have a female that is around you. This to me feels like an aunt, possibly, um, I'm gonna say like an aunt's, and I probably should say aunt instead of aunt, right? <laughs> an aunt's, um, to me, older, even though I know some families have where kids can be nieces and aunts, this to me feels as if this was somebody who is, I'll say, an average age. Let's see here for a minute. I get the letter M attached to her name. I'm not getting a full name, though. I'm getting a letter M. But I get this individual around you all the time, too, as far as loved ones. And, and again, kind of keep in mind that sometimes for me, there's a connected tissue to other family members that, if you will, spills over to us. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your immediate 
intuitive could be through one of your relatives. But remember the letter M and feels like an aunt. So this could be a great aunt or this could even be a cousin that it would be like an age group. As far as angels, there's one in particular that I feel like has helped you more than once when you've gone to trip. And I don't mean as in going on a trip, but going to, let's say, trip over a curb or trip over a stone or, or just trip not paying attention. I get that there's an angel around who not just loans a hand periodically. They, they pretty much let you do your own thing, but I, I get them around you. The biggest thing that you can do if you really want to connect with them is create some peace in your world, get quiet, and acknowledge the fact that you are open to the connection. And it's okay even to say, you know, I think they're around, I want them to be around, I'm uncertain, but I'm open. Because as soon as you say, I'm open, there's a gateway for them to come through. And if, if you hadn't heard the earlier caller, I was letting them know there is a myriad of ways that you can connect with these loved ones. You can make affirmative statements before you go to sleep at night, such as, you know, I'm open to connecting with my angels or I'm open to connecting with my guides. Just putting that type of statement out there again opens a gateway for you. The other thing you can do is walk through a meditative experience. See yourself going through a natural environment versus a man-made, meaning you wouldn't envision yourself walking through a house, but more walking through the woods or walking through a jungle or even on a beach. And knowing that at the end of the walk, there is an area to sit and that your loved one, be it the guide that you're asking for or the angel comes through. Just understand that how they appear is not always the way that we expect. They can show up as if they are a silhouette or they may show up looking like a butterfly. Just be open to communicating. And I will share something that's kind of funny, but works really well. If you do this and let's say a little animal appears and you're thinking, well, I can't talk to them. <laughs> Actually, you can. Just greet them in whatever way you feel comfortable. If you feel like putting your hands out or you, you want to put your hands together like in prayer, or you want to just think in your mind, well, welcome, little one. However you are comfortable doing that, that's what you do, and you will get a response. Sometimes you show up and you don't see a form, but instead there's a, a gift, like a, a box with a bow on it. And you're thinking, what is this? And you open the box, and there's something special that's intrinsic to how you feel. I know it sounds very abstract, but the thing about all of this is we live in a, a concrete world. You know, there's a lot of linear thought, a lot of just flat lines, hard surfaces. And yet that part of us that is connected to the divine that has to do with higher consciousness doesn't have that. There are no hard lines. There are no fast and hard rules. The only thing that is really concrete funny enough, I'm using the word concrete, is that energy exists and it transmutes, it changes, it can be different forms, it can be expressed in different ways. And I'm going to give a really funny analogy. If you have blonde hair and you change your hair to brown, you know, you dye your hair, you're still who you are, but your appearance is different. There's not a lot of thought, though, to, oh, my gosh, I've transformed. It's more a matter of I want to do something, so I'm doing it. In the ethers, meaning in the area outside of our earthly plane, the idea of shifting form, making things happen, happens much quicker. The other thing to recognize is anything that we think of here is being created as we are thinking of it. It's simply a matter of it coming into our view from the invisible. Like we're never really separate from things. It's more a matter of getting to a place where we're comfortable seeing them. We're comfortable to connecting with them. This makes sense, I hope. Somewhat. <laughs> okay. Really. You have some questions? Um, Did you have a question, Hello? honey, about 
something of what I said so I can clarify for you? Uh, uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. Let, let, me, let me share I a little. I think I know who the M is. The lady you think with you the know? M traveled together to my aunt. But she's not, we're not, we're just, we were, we were friends, but we're no longer friends. Um, mm -hmm. But she was like a sister to me. Um, and so, but she's not passed on or anything. She's alive. So maybe her presence is still with me, even if we're not together physically. Right. right. So the, what you're saying here is very appropriate for what I was explaining as far as there's not that hard rule. We literally can exist in a physical body and separate from that, or we can have an energy that sits with someone and remains. And even if you're not communicating with the person, that doesn't mean that you can't be connected to them. Okay. Okay. What I'd love to uh, share. I'm sorry, say that again. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. What I'd love to share with you is play a little game with yourself. Take a piece of paper and on one side, write down all the things you're grateful for, whatever it is. I'm grateful that the sun came out today. I am grateful that I have food in my stomach, whatever it is. Write as many things as you can until you really feel that sense of gratitude inside of you. Then on the other side, write a question something that you want to know about your guides or angels or loved ones. And then just sit for a moment, close your eyes and allow the information to come to you. The loved one you want to connect with, when I say loved one, be it an angel, a guide or someone who's passed, will relay the message to you. You will either get a sensation about it or you will actually hear words or all of a sudden you'll just start writing. But it's an, a fairly easy exercise that you can use to start getting connected and feeling really comfortable with that type of energy. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely try that. I love activities and doing things that can help me get more deep and um, transcend into that realm and connecting with guides and loved ones and angels. Perfect. And one of the easiest things that out of everything is going outside in nature. When we do that, we open ourselves up to all things. Thank you so much for calling. It was a pleasure talking with you and I wish you a beautiful holiday season. Yes, thank you, Deb. I really appreciate your reading. You have a wonderful holiday season as well. Thank you, hon. Take good care. If you'd like to reach me for a personal session, feel free to call 561-755-2166 or check me out on social media. I'm all over the place. <laughs> or the website, alielise.com. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. <laughs>